Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In today's video, I'll show you the breakdown of how I worked on this animation and the full process behind it. Time to level up your skills. Let's go. So the first thing I want to talk about is the storyboard. Whenever we have a animation like this, we always have a storyboard in place. We have a solid concept in place. In terms of this animation, we do have a storyboard build out. It's in Illustrator. You can see these are the different frames that we have for the whole animation. It's a very short and simple storyboard. Typically, we have some grid animation in the first scene with this ball traveling inside this tunnel and then the grid is going to flip to the side, the ball is going to drop from the top all the way inside this middle circle here. It's going to do some rotation and then zoom out to morph into this eye icon, eye shape here and then we're going to do some eye animation. There's going to be glow in the background and there's also a grid on the ground. Then we're going to do some grid animation at the last scene as well. And we also did a color exploration for the color palette. We have this red and uh, gray version as well. But in the end, we chose this yellow and green one because it's got more contrast. I like this color better. In terms of color palette, you can always go on this website that's called coolers.co. And then you can go to explore palettes. This page is going to show you all the different color palette that's being used by the different designers all over the world. So this is a good resource for you to pick a very convenient um, color palette that you can use for your project and you can customize this project based on your liking. So after we have the storyboard in place, let's go inside After Effects. We're inside this render folder. Let's see the animation we have now. Before we do the animation, most of the time we would select a music track that goes with the animation in our mind. And uh, we already have a music track here. I'm not sure if you can hear it when I play it, but uh, it's good practice to always have a music track first before you start the animation so that when you are animating, you can always rely on the music to give you more inspiration. And then it's going to make your movement more to the beat of the music. But let's turn off the music. Let's see the animation for now. It's got a good pacing to it. This is our final animation. I'll go through the animation with you and see how we animated this piece. Let's go to the first frame, which is our first storyboard based on our Illustrator file. It's pretty straightforward. What we have is we build out the grid inside Illustrator and then we use the extension plugin called Overlord to push this grid to After Effects so that we have two grids. One is the top grid and then one bottom grid. And then if I show the keyframes on the two grids, you can see we only animated the position property. At first, they're going to be close to each other. And then once we go forward in time, these two grids is going to split and then show the yellow tunnel that's behind the grid. And then at the same time, we're going to animate the main circle onto the scene with just a scale change. So basically we have if I solo the background and the grid, and this is our grid animation, we only have a position change as the grid grows to both sides. And then we have a rotation to have this grid rotate to the side and show this tunnel being flipped to the side. And then once we add the main ball, this is going to be our animation once we have the main ball. So this circle is going to pop into the scene as, as the grid grows or flip to the side, the circle is going to slide to the left first and then slide down. And on the circle, we added this echo effect to make a smear out of the movement it has. Look, now let's pull up the yellow tunnel. And now let's see the full animation with the circle and the yellow tunnel. Pretty straightforward. Basically, we only animated the position, the scale, and the rotation in this scene. And now let's go to the next scene. Once we have the circle flipped to the side and then shooting down, we will have the circle coming from the top all the way entering this little middle gradient circle. And then we would have this gradient circle, which is layer two do a rotation together with the main circle 
just to give it more complexity so that the two, the color and the little glowing ball is animating at the same time. It's got one, two, three, three different movement, one drop and then one rotate and then another rotate with a zoom out at the end. And in terms of the circle, we animated the position property with the circle dropping from the top with some smear effect, which is controlled by the echo. And then we have some rotation and skill changes as well. So that's how we animate the second scene. And then let's go to the third scene. In this scene, it might look a bit complex because in this scene, it might look a bit complex because we have this grid that's going on. We already built out the grid inside Illustrator. So all we need to do is to select all the grids and then use the overlord to push the grid inside After Effects. And now that we have it, we basically just did one simple scale change from a bigger grid to a smaller grid so that the grid is moving inside while the eye is zooming in, the grid is zooming out so that we have this parallax effect and we have this eye animation with the circle parented and then just going to be moving around a couple times i can show you the motion path of my pupil so in terms of the pupil there's only a position change with the eye coming to the side and then move to this side as well and then going back to the middle And at the end, we have a zooming out motion controlled by a null object. All right, that's good with the third frame. And then let's go to the last frame and take a look. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We will publish new content every week. Click the subscribe button to level up your animation skills and get inspired with great animation every week. You can also join our exclusive community to hang out with motion designers to grow together. Check the link in the description below. So this is a frame that I want to focus on this tutorial because I want to show you how we animated this great animation in the last scene. Basically, we have this cube that's coming up and then we have this great animation at the back. In terms of great animation, let me show you how we did that. Let's create a composition. Let's call this one grid animation. And then all we need to do is to draw a line. Let's turn on the title action save and then let's draw a straight line. Make the width to be maybe three points. And then let's go inside the content. Let's add a repeater to our line. Now that we have a repeater, in terms of the copy, let's do 15 copies. And then in terms of the offset, let's change it, the offset to a Y position offset with maybe 100 pixels so that we have all these different lines that's going down all the way exiting the scene that we have. And then what we need to do is to add another repeater. Let's go click the content, add a different repeater, repeater two. And what we need to do is in terms of copy, let's do a four copy. We're going to repeat what we had above the second repeater. And in terms of the transform, I'm going to change this 100 in the X position to zero. And then I'm going to change the rotation to 90 degrees so that we have this grid that's going on. However, it's not long enough because our original copy is not long enough. So we, what we need to do is to select this original copy and make it longer so that our repeater is actually going outside vertically outside of the scene that looks pretty good and then what we need to do is to slightly adjust the position of the second repeater so that they're aligning better yeah, something like this and now if i go to my shape and then go to animate the scale property of my original one line. Let's unclick the scale and then let's animate this from zero to 100. We're gonna get this kind of animation. 
this is the animation we get. And let's just go to easy ease like this. And then next, what we need to do is we need to go to the first repeater. Let's go down inside the transform. Let's animate the scale again over here. Let's add a keyframe. The same way we animated the first line. We can change this one to zero as well. And then let's see what it looks like. This way, we're going to have this almost like a diamond shape reveal of our patterns once we have these two keyframes added in. And then let's go inside to modify this curve to give it a bit more energy. And let's see our animation. That looks pretty good. And then what we need to do is still pretty static. So what we want to do is We also want to animate the position change. This position change of the first repeater is going to basically contain, it's basically going to manipulate the distance between each of the lines that we had. So we're going to have maybe a bigger number, 200 at the beginning. And then let's do maybe a smaller number, 100 at the end. Delete this one. Let's go add a easy ease and then manipulate the curve again. And then let's offset the keyframe. Let's see the animation. That looks pretty good. And next what we need to do is we can go to our, we can go to our transform property that controls everything on this layer. Let's add a rotation property, maybe give it two seconds. And then at the beginning, let's change it to 90 degrees. Let's go easy easy keyframe and then change the curve let's see what it looks like now we're going to have this complex animation with the grid revealing with some rotation to it so this is the type of animation that we get in our last frame of the animation in order to animate the grid that we had i think the position change is not obvious enough so i'm going to Put this one maybe to 200 and then at the beginning let's change it to maybe 250 so that we have a very obvious zooming out something like that i think that works and then if we want to make it disappear we could just go adjust the stroke width maybe change it to zero and then it's going to disappear and then if we duplicate this layer let's hide the second one let's work on the first one again if we have a original size of this stroke width let's go to the stroke width if the original stroke width is much bigger let's say if it's 200 and then everything is going to be 200 around this position over here and then I'm going to just easy ease this one change the curve a little bit so what we're going to get is going to be this very weird transition as an alpha mat and in the previous animation I'm using this alpha mat as a transition to my scene overall and then you can also see there's going to be these different type of grid once we have adjusted the stroke width and it's just based on the stroke width, we're going to get different type of animation. And then we can also control all these different properties in the grid setting or the repeater setting to get the animation that we want. And that's how we created this last piece of animation. And if we go back to the main scene, there you go. That's how we animated this piece over here. That's it with this video. Hope you like it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for your next project. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Let me know if this video is helpful in the comments down below and what other videos or tutorials you would like to see on this channel. I love to hear your feedback. One last thing, don't forget to join our exclusive community to hang out with your fellow designers. Stay on top of the industry trends and grow together. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.